Happy Hour do not represent Cox Media Group or its sponsoring. Anything you hear may and will be used against you. Thank you. All security! What's up? This is Happy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy. And from the men's room on 99.9 KISW in Seattle, Ted Smith is on Happy Hour. What's up, man? What's up, Ryan? Thanks for having me on, dude. Anytime, man. I was just talking to you off air about it. I love how laid back you guys are at KISW with the morning show and with your show. It's very relaxing to hear like edgy talk radio, but you guys don't go for the shock jockness. You know what I mean? Yeah, and and we're lucky, you know. I mean, obviously with the men's room, we have some pretty funny dudes, but you know, having BJ and Migs and that talented group in the morning, it kind of helps to have that laid back kind of funny approach. And I had BJ on my show last month, and he said the best part about working there is there's no, like, rivalries. Like, everybody there likes each other, and it's like a big team effort, you know? Yeah, well, I mean, I don't know if you've noticed, but, I mean, I, you know, I do a podcast with Big. I mean, we don't even work in the same day part, but we just get along, so we do one together called the Megacast. How does that go? How do you find a time to prep for a top-rated show in the afternoon and then do a podcast and then go through everything you do during the day, just like normal errands or whatever you do in your free time? How do you find a time to do everything? Uh, you know, I, I don't know if you'd agree, but to me, like, you're doing what we kind of do in talk radio and entertainment stuff, like, doing the radio and doing the podcast to me is the easy part, you know? Like... It, there's always time for that. The hard part's getting all the, the little less normal kind of business work done. Would you say that radio's work? Because my girlfriend rolls her eyes when I come home after doing, like, promotion gigs for The Bone here in Tampa, and I'm like, oh, I worked so hard. So would you say radio's work? Because to me, it's tedious. You have to be on your game. It's not like, let's say, uh, mowing grasses or something, but it is work, in my opinion. Oh, yeah, I'd agree with that. I mean, you're right. I mean, I'm not digging ditches, but uh, sometimes it's tough, too. It's like, I'm sure you're the same way. Like, you know, people that work in our industry are very outgoing, but then there's also times where they just need quiet time to kind of recharge. What type of person are you off the mic? Because a lot of times the guys that are the most outspoken on air are the ones that are the most quiet off air. So what are you like off the air? Oh, I'm a politician at heart. I love going out and shaking hands and meeting people. So generally, I'm a pretty uh, pretty social animal outside of work as well. That's what I heard from Miggs. Miggs was saying at the morning show boot camp that everybody likes to go out after their shows and hang out at a park or bars, not just to get noticed, but to like recruit people to listen to the show, which I think is a great idea. Yeah, and I mean, you know, it's just fun. Like, I work on that side of the radio now that my voice is coming out of it, but, you know, I don't forget what it's like sitting in your car and hearing these guys and or women. And, you know, if you get a chance to go out to a bar and have a beer with them or see them at a game, you know, say hello. So now, how do you guys prep for your show? Because you guys have a very well-oiled machine when it comes to the show. It just seems like everything flows so smoothly. So how do you guys get everything prepped together? Uh, the men's room works pretty, a little bit different. Like, uh, we kind of have like a, a structure of like outlines kind of what each day show is going to be about. And then, uh, let me just say, I mean, the first hour or two, we're all in the office. Like, we don't even really talk to each other. Everybody's kind of looking up stories, getting ready. And then like an hour before the show, we start to start BSing a little bit, figure out what the uh, topic's going to be and. I don't know, it's just like that, like trading stories back and forth. Everybody's pretty up on their stuff. How do you guys find prep to talk about when it's like a slow news day and let's say every news cycle is about Trump, Trump, and Trump? So how do you guys find things to talk about so it doesn't get too much about Trump? Uh, that is a very good question. <laughs> uh, sometimes it's just a matter of finding one odd story and kind of turning that into a thing. You know what I mean? Because you can't just sit there and talk to hot or Trump all the time. But, you know, people get bored with that. And that's not why they're coming to us. They're coming to us because they're stuck in their car and they want to be entertained. So we're just going to latch on to one story that we can twist into like a men's room thing, you know? 
Yeah, that makes sense because what I like about the show too is you guys seem like you do care about what the listeners want to hear because a lot of times it seems like shows do the show to cater to themselves and to pat themselves on the back for four hours, but it seems like you guys do care about entertaining Seattle. Oh, 100%. And it's nice, too, because, like, you know, if it's TV time or something, like Miles and Thrills just trust that I have that stuff covered and ready to go. You know, if it's uh, if it's a B topic that Miles is doing, you know, I, you know, I'll check in and see what the thing is, but, like, it's kind of a trust thing. Everybody knows everybody else is doing their job, so it makes it easier. So let's say one of you guys is in a very cranky mood or one of you guys didn't get a lot of sleep. Does that throw off everyone's vibe? Do you guys have arguments? Or once the mic turns on, are you guys able to make it come together? Uh, generally, when the mics come on, we can make it come together. And that's kind of like our un- unwritten rule. Like, do whatever you want, but, you know, when it comes to those four hours, just focus in on the show. It's almost like being an athlete, you know? Like, once that ref blows the whistle, you got to play the game and get it done. So, what I want to ask you, too, is have you guys ever had arguments in between the breaks or in between the songs, and then once the mic goes on, you guys are just very happy with each other, but then once the mic goes off, you guys get into arguments? Or have you guys had arguments before or after the show? Has there been a time that things have gotten very heated? Uh, yeah, I'm sure there has. I mean, it's pretty rare, but, you know, on the same token, you're talking about three dudes that have been working together for... 13, 14 years. So there's going to be some things. <laughs> like any relationship. But uh, it, it, we, we don't let that stuff bleed onto the air. And like I said, it's very rare if there is an issue. So how did you get your foot in the door at KISW since you've been there for about 14 years? How did it first begin for you? Uh, so... Years ago, I was living right outside of D.C., that's where I grew up, and I was a janitor, and then I went to, uh, when I heard a commercial, I went to you know, the Connecticut School of Broadcast for like three months, saved up like $5,000, moved to Baltimore, started interning there at a couple stations, and actually I interned for uh, Thrill on the show he was working on at the time, but those sports guys, and then... Uh, I kept working with them. They gave Thrill a midday show with this other dude named Bill, and uh, they got rid of him and brought in Miles. And that's when I kind of started working with them kind of full-time. So and eventually, what's... the show got moved out here. I'll be dead honest with you, Ryan. I had no idea where Seattle was. I thought I was moving to, like, California. What was it like? Because you're from the... East Coast, so you're from D.C., Baltimore. What was the immediate change when you first went to Washington, Seattle? Uh, Wow, look at all these white people. Yeah, it seems like it's a very white city. It seems like there's a lot of Caucasians in Seattle. (laughs) You know what I mean? I mean, I grew up in D.C. County in Maryland, so that was was my first thing when I moved out here. I was like, holy cow, there's a lot of white people. And then I don't think I really fathomed that Mount Rainier was an actual volcano until I saw it. And kind of, I was like, holy crap. Dude, I'll look at pictures of, like, what you guys put up or Migs or BJ when you guys are taking a walk and you guys take a selfie. And I'm jealous, man. I'm happy here in Tampa Bay, but it seems so beautiful with your skyline you guys have and you have a mountain in the background of the Space Needle. Seattle seems like a really cool city, man. Oh, it's awesome. And, it, and I'm telling you, I think I'm telling you off the air a little bit, but in the summertime, you'll be hard-pressed to find a more beautiful spot than, like, Seattle, Tacoma, Portland. You know, the Northwest is great. Has it changed at all since you first moved here? Because it gets a lot of attention for being douchey at times and kind of hip. Or is it the same laid-back town that you've been at for the last 15 years? Uh, <laughs> so I'm kind of in the middle of this argument. Seattle has definitely changed since I've been here. And frankly, some of the changes are awful. You know, like cities get bigger, you kind of lose that, that feel that the town had. But on the same token, I think a lot of people that move here, 
you're surrounded by water and stuff, like even people that, you know, get out here tend to take on that kind of laid back style. That makes sense, man, because also the thing you guys have going for you is weed is legal there. So, of course, people are going to be laid back. I mean, you guys can smoke weed wherever. I mean, that's awesome. (laughs) Brian, I don't know if you smoke or not, but the the ability to go into a legal work weed shop, like go into a liquor store and buy some weed is awesome. Right? Like it's raining a little bit, but... You know, like right now I'm walking to work and it's, you know, almost 70, the sun's out. Like it's, it, it, the Northwest is dope, man. I, I didn't like it for the first six months. Now I'd be hard pressed to move back to the East Coast. But what about when people say that it rains all the time out there? Is that actually true? Yeah, it does. But it's not like, uh, you know, it's not like you get down in Tampa. It's not like those torrential kind of storms and downpours. But it just, uh, It'll be overcast and kind of sprinkling. Like, when you were growing up, if you ever played Little League, like, a lot of the rain, like, pain where it's like, do we cancel the game? Do we not cancel the game? Like, it's chilly and wet, but it's not raining too hard. Does it cause people to not be as good of drivers because they're freaking out over a little bit of drizzle? (laughs) Yeah. I mean, the main thing is it's just in the wintertime, like, this winter, like, it's not that it was pouring every day. It just was overcast. I mean, you just you just didn't see the sun, it seemed like, for like two months. Does that get depressing? Because I lived in Cleveland. I never saw the sun for four months until I moved out and moved to Tampa. So is it depressing for you to not see it for two months? Uh, it can grind on you a little bit. You just got to be smart. You know, you only have to drive half hour, 40 minutes, probably 45 minutes to get to a mountain resort and go skiing or snowboarding. So if you're smart about how you kind of break up your winter, then it's all right. What's the coldest it ever gets? Can it ever actually get, like, frigid? Because, like, in Chicago, we have, like, negative 20-degree weather, and I assume it doesn't get that cold up there. But does it ever get close to being that cold where it's frigid? Rarely. Like, that's the thing about Seattle. It's very temperate. I mean, you could you could almost get away with wearing shorts and a hoodie most year-round. You're only going to get, like, a week or two in the winter that's, like, around freezing. And in the summertime, you'll get, like, one week in the 90s. But it's pretty temperate. So now, going back to your show, I saw in the trades that you guys are going to be nationally syndicated. How awesome is that for you guys? I don't know how much you can talk about it, but how happy are you guys about this new deal? Oh, it's amazing. You know, especially to be linked up with Westwood One because... I mean, you know, you're, you're, you're working at radio. Like, when I started board hopping and everything came off Westwood One, the idea now that my voice will be on a show that will be on that network is, is pretty crazy. So what are you guys going to do to keep it for Seattle but also make it sound local for the different towns? Have you guys talked about that yet? Yeah, I can't get into too much of that stuff. We're still kind of working on it. <laughs> but... uh because they're definitely, you know, the concerns to come up. You know, you want to sound, you want to sound local and fresh or whatever to everybody. You know, I predict it's weird to say that you guys are the, are the next up and comers in radio because you guys are in a top twenty market for the past fifteen years. But I feel like this syndication deal is going to make you guys just explode in radio. And I predict you guys will literally kick ass in every market just because your show is so unique. You know. Ah, thanks, dude. I appreciate that. So now, where can people find your show online if they're not in Seattle where they can't tune into 99.9? Uh, well, of course, you know, you can always uh, check out KSW.com. That has uh, all our audio and podcasts up there. That also has my two podcasts, by the way, if I can plug them. E-Podcast and the Mega Cast. And then... Uh, you know, I'm not positive about the syndication stuff. I know it's going, it's on Westwood One. And then, uh, let's say, MentoringLive.com would have uh, other stuff, too, for you. Well, dude, keep up the good work, man. I've been a fan of what you guys do as a whole over at KISW 99.9 in Seattle. So it's been a lot of fun having you on Happy Hour, dude. Dude, thanks for having me on. And uh, always glad to see you grinding and uh 
you know, making making your way in the biz. I'm trying, man. I've wanted to do this for way too long. I was the little nerdy, dorky fourth grader that listened to the radio. So it's very cool to think that I'm sort of in the business, you know? <laughs> By the way, I got to ask you a random question. What's How up? How tall are you? How tall am I? Yeah, I always see your picture, and I'm like, man, he's like Conan O'Brien. Like, you think you're taller than everybody. I'm like 6'8". <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> Ask BJ or Miggs about me or uh, the Reverend or anybody. I've met them at the morning show boot camp, and they just comment about how weird and tall I am. I've potentially drank a lot with them. You know what I mean? It's been a lot of fun hanging out with those guys. You guys should come to the boot camp, you know? Yeah, I know. We should. It's always uh, it's always the same weekend as one festival I go to, but Miggs is always on me. Like, you got to come one year, dude. Dude, come this year, man. It is awesome. It's amazing to see over 100 egos in one room that wouldn't look at each other. But for three to four days, everybody drinks, 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 and then learns about radio. It's so much fun. Yeah, that sounds like stuff I'm into. Well, dude, keep up the good work, man, and have a good show this afternoon on 99.9 KISW. All right, thanks for having me on, Ryan. All right, thanks, Ted. And that was Ted Smith from the men's room on 99.9 KISW in Seattle as he called into happy hour. Now, if you want to hear more of my show, it's not hard. It's not rocket science. All you have to do is get the Hoppy Radio app, H-O-P-P-E Radio in the Google Play or iOS shop for the iPhone or any Apple device. And I've had BJ and Migs on my show, so if you're out in Seattle and you want to hear that, just get the app. And I do a show that's kind of the same similar format as the talk radio that's on KISW, where I talk about the news and I interview people. So I think Seattle would like it. Go to my website, ryanhoppyradio.com. Tweet at me, at ryanhoppyradio. Snapchat is hoppyradio. And then email me, ryanhoppyradio at gmail.com. This has been Hoppy Hour. I am your host, Ryan Hoppy, saying peace out. Happy hour. Happy hour.